Greetings, humans and sundry others. So today I am going to be starting work on the costume for Ren, my main character from the book that my friend and I are co-writing. Now I intended to wait to work on Ren's costume until after I had finished Kelta's, but then I got an amazing little 3D printed knife from the same people who printed the horns for me recently. And I am just so excited to paint this up and make a sheath for it and get it ready for Ren that I have to start on his costume, even though I'm not done with Kelta's yet. So here we go, Ren's costume, part one. Originally, I meant to carve Ren's knife out of this piece of wood, which is the same thing that I did here for this prototype knife several years ago. But I got the 3D printed one instead, and I like it a whole lot better than anything my uh, poor wood carving skills could accomplish. So I am very excited to paint this one up and have a lot more detail in it than I would have been able to manage on my own. Now there's actually a story behind this knife. It's very important to my character, Ren. So while you watch me paint it, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you about it. When Ren was 11, he went to sea for the first time aboard his father's cargo ship, the Butterfly. Ren's uncle Tremon gave him this knife as a gift when he left home. You can see that the hilt is quite small, sized for a boy's hand, which makes it a little awkward for an adult to hold. If it was an ordinary knife, Ren would have long since replaced it with a slightly larger and more comfortable one. However, this knife is carved from the bone of a fathom snake, a massive ocean-dwelling serpent that can hypnotize its prey, repel magic, and break spells with a touch. In Elend, Ren's homeland, it's usually illegal to hunt fathom snakes or to sell their bones and skins. But Ren's Uncle Tremon is a powerful mage, both in terms of spellcasting ability and social influence. This makes him one of the few people who's allowed to own fathom snake artifacts for magical research purposes. Or, you know, to protect his favorite nephew from enemy mages. Not that Ren has ever been attacked by a mage, so the spell-breaking properties of his knife don't really matter to him. What Ren cares about is luck. He always wears the little knife on his belt as a lucky charm, and often touches its hilt for reassurance. Of course, he uses it sometimes, the edge never dulls, so it's a valuable tool despite its small size. Most importantly, as long as Ren has his lucky knife, things can't go too far wrong. Or so he hopes. Now that I'm happy with the colors, the final step in the process is to paint the entire thing with a nice, smooth, glossy glaze to give it the shine that I want. Here it is, all painted up and looking rather lovely if I do say so myself. Now, with the knife itself done, it's time to move on to making the sheath. I have only made two sheaths before. The first one was made of cardboard, put together with masking tape, and with a piece of fabric glued over the top of it all so that it didn't look quite so slapdash. The second sheath that I made more recently is made all of wood, put together with wood glue, uh, painted silver, and this one I think is a lot better, but still very different from what I'm planning to do here, making a leather sheath. As a result, this is going to be rather an experimental process. I'm starting off by tracing the shape of the knife onto a piece of paper so that I know the general shape and size of the piece of leather that I'm going to use. Now I'm tracing a larger piece that will theoretically be the upper part of the sheath where it overlaps the thickness of the blade. And then I wasn't sure about using paper and decided maybe it would do better to have my template on cardboard instead. So I cut out a cardboard version and sized that to the knife so that I would have a nice sturdy template to use when I cut out my leather. Although, as it turns out, I'm actually not using real leather at all. I'm going to be using uh, some fake leather pants, 
which are what I happened to have in my stash of leather and leather-like materials in my sewing room. So that does mean it's going to be somewhat easier to put together, although not quite as sturdy and high quality as it would be if I used real leather. I've spared you the footage of me fiddling around for about 15 or 20 minutes trying to figure out the best way to put this together, which involved some failed attempts with hot glue, but in the end I decided that just stitching the whole thing together was going to be the best option. So I went ahead and got out my trusty needle and thread and started hand sewing. I did consider using my sewing machine. I took a scrap of this fake leather material over to the machine, which threw a hissy fit and absolutely refused to stitch through multiple layers of this material. So here I am hand sewing. You'll see me occasionally using a leather punching awl to put some holes in this, even though it is not as thick or as stiff as real leather. There were still some points where I hurt my fingers trying to force the needle through several layers of this fabric and decided that the awl would work just as well to punch a hole through this as through actual leather. Now that I finally have the whole thing assembled properly, I'm just using the scissors to trim off a few extra little edges that are sticking out past the stitching, making sure the whole thing is nice and smooth. And now noticing that the inner side of this fabric that doesn't have the fake leather facing has a sort of grayish color to it, so I'm just taking a black marker and real quick going along the edges and darkening them up to make them blend in with the rest of the sheath. Now for the fun part. It's time to age this sheath a little bit to make it look like a less than scrupulously tidy teenage boy has been carrying it around on board a military ship for 10 years. I don't want to beat it up too much, especially since it's not real leather and I don't want to risk damaging the material to the point where it might fail, but I thought that it would be definitely pretty dirty after all this time, so a little bit of muddy paint to age it and dirty it up a little bit. My fingers ended up looking disgusting by the end of this, but hey, sometimes finger painting is just what needs to happen. Once the paint job is complete to my satisfaction, I'm back at it with my leather all, this time not using it to punch holes, but to use that sort of sharp tip to scrape at the surface of the material. I'm scraping very gently here because, as I've mentioned, this is not real leather. I don't want to damage it too much, but as it turns out, just sort of lightly scraping the tip of this back and forth across the surface is giving me some really great scratches and aged marks. Here's the knife, finished, in its sheath, all painted up and everything. So I know you guys have gotten a look at it before, but I'm just so happy with it. Here it is, all finished. It makes me so glad. I love how it turned out. I love the shape, I love the colors, I love how the aging on the sheath came out. I'm just super thrilled with how this project went. And I'm also very excited to start working on a similar one for Kelta's costume. She carries uh, two short swords and a hidden knife, all of which I'm going to need to make sheaths for. The swords I already have, uh, they're real swords. The knife, on the other hand, is going to be 3D printed like this one. So stick around, like, subscribe, leave comments, you know the whole YouTube drill. Until next time, fare thee well.